Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 18. We're reading from verse 18 all the way through to verse 28. That's the end of the chapter. And this is a very awesome portion of scripture. We read here how Paul celebrates the feasts of the Lord. Okay, consider this. Paul is like arguably the leader of Christianity. He celebrates the feasts of the Lord. Why don't Christians today? And we're also going to be talking about Apollos, the introduction to Apollos. Let's get into this. Paul, having stayed after this many more days, took his leave of the brothers and sailed from there to Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. We know that Priscilla and Aquila is a wife and husband team. He shaved his head in Sencre, for he had a vow. Now, this is a very, very important point to understand here as well, because there is only one vow in the scriptures that requires you to shave your head, and that is what they call the vow of the Nazarite. That is found in Numbers chapter 6. Just so far, we know that Paul observed the Torah to the point of taking the vow and shaving his head as per law of God. He came to Ephesus and he left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue. Once again, always going to the synagogues. Hey, if you live according to Book of Acts Christian faith, you'd be doing the same thing. You'd be going to synagogues a lot. If you're going anywhere, you'd be going to the synagogues. You know, I, let me tell you something. I had a little argument with a pastor before. You know, he was saying, well, you know, you guys should go find a good church and you should have a fellowship in church. I said, well, that's not biblical. He said, what, what are you talking about? You got to, you know, you're supposed to don't forsake the assembly of yourselves. I said, listen, in the book of Acts, the Bible way is to go to synagogue and meet house to house. And he just, he didn't know what to say to that because that's the truth. In the scriptures, in the book of Acts, the way they practice it is they went to synagogue. Okay, they didn't go plant their own church, so to speak. Okay, they didn't, you know, steeple and brick building and all, nothing like that. Okay, they went to synagogue, and the believers, those who actually accepted and knew that Yeshua was the Messiah, they met in the synagogue and they met from house to house. And I know some of you might be saying, "Well, it says church in the scripture to the church in Ephesus, to the church in Galatia." The word church means the people who are called out from the world, the people that God has called out to be holy for himself. The word church, ecclesia, are those who are called out, those who are separated unto God. That's all it means. It doesn't mean a building. It doesn't mean a building with a bell and a steeple. It means nothing of the sort. It's talking about people. So biblically speaking, the church went to synagogue and met from house to house. Once again, verse 19, he came to Ephesus and he left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to stay with them a longer time, he declined. But taking his leave of them, he said, I must by all means keep this coming feast in Jerusalem, but I will return again to you if God wills. Then he set sail from Ephesus. Obviously here it's talking about a feast that the Jews celebrate. This is obviously one of the feasts of the Lord. Now, the question is, which feast is it? Some people believe that it is the feast of Pentecost or Shavuot. Some people believe that it's a feast of Passover or Pesach. I personally think that it's probably the feast of Pesach. Passover, because a couple chapters later, it talks about the Feast of Pentecost, Shavuot. And we know that the Feast of Pentecost, Shavuot, comes just a little while after the Feast of Passover. So I believe that this is probably talking about the Feast of Passover. Another important clue for it to register in every one of our minds. Paul celebrated not only the Sabbaths, not only the Nazarite vow according to the Torah, but also the feasts of the Lord according to the Torah. When he had landed in Caesarea, he went up and greeted the assembly. Again, this word assembly here means church, ecclesia, and went down to Antioch. Having spent some time there, he departed and went through the region of Galatia 
and Phrygia in order establishing all the disciples. Now a certain Jew named Apollos, an Alexandrian by race, an eloquent man, came to Ephesus. He was mighty in the scriptures. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, although he knew only the baptism of John. Verse 26, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. But when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. When he had determined to pass over into Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to receive him. When he had come, he greatly helped those who had believed through grace, for he powerfully refuted the Jews, publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. Publicly showing by the scriptures that Yeshua was the Messiah. Again, you got to realize here, when it says the scriptures, it had nothing to do with any of the books of the New Testament that we know of today. It was everything prior to the New Testament, okay? All of the Tanakh, plus some of the writings that we see in the Dead Sea Scrolls that we know was in circulation back in those days, okay? For example, the book of Enoch, the book of Jubilees, okay? So Apollos, again, here's another man who took the so-called Old Testament scriptures and preached the gospel of Jesus only from the so-called Old Testament, a.k.a. Tanakh, okay? If you, your pastor, your priest, your bishop, your church leader cannot preach the gospel of Jesus from the so-called Old Testament alone, you're, you're not walking in biblical Christianity. In order to have the true biblical Christian doctrine, we have to be able to preach the gospel from the Tanakh alone. Always seek the truth. Always be humble. Be like Apollos. He was praised here. He was considered to be a great man here. Two great attributes of Apollos here. One, he was fervent, okay? He was fervent. He was fervent to know the scriptures and to teach the scriptures. And he was humble. He was humble enough to listen to a couple, two or three tent makers. Teach him, school him a little bit more about the Lord. So be like Apollos, be fervent and be humble. Always seek the truth and always, always have in your mind, hey, you know what? Perhaps what I've heard before, perhaps what I so naively believed before as truth was actually not so true. Perhaps I believed something that was false and I accepted it as truth all my life. Be humble enough to at least consider that possibility. Seek the truth. Seek God. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.